Howdy everyone! Today, we're going to work on configuring privilege escalation on our managed nodes, and that should help us learn more about this RHCE exam objective right here. Now, the core plan of this video is going to be to write a playbook that'll create a dedicated automation user, which will be able to run pseudo commands without a password. You'll remember that so far, we've been logging into our nodes as an ordinary user called admin. And you know what? That's just not going to fly anymore, because we'd rather have a dedicated account to do our automation work from now on. So, when it comes to implementing this new account, we're going to need to reuse some of what we learned in the previous video about SSH key distribution in order for us to get up and running. So yeah, these two videos do sort of go hand in hand. Just keep that in mind. Alright, uh, with all of that being said, let's go ahead and do this. Okay, to start, uh, this will be a bit strange and familiar at the same time. Uh, what I'm going to do is actually uh, delete my .ssh directory in my home folder. Now, why did I do this, you might ask? Well, I want to clear out the SSH keys that we generated in the last video, and this is so that I can clearly show us pivoting from a regular password-based authentication method to a completely passwordless version. Now, I mean, of course, we partially got the way there in the last video because we did set up key-based authentication, but this time we're taking it a step further with a new user and the passwordless pseudo configuration, so I just thought a clean slate would be nice. Anyways, uh, what we'll do now is just create a new project directory, so that'll be project 5, and I'll cd into there. There we go. And now bear with me, I'm just going to type in an inventory and ansible.cfg file real quick. So inventory.ini, and in here I'm going to use uh, a group called app servers, and inside of app servers there's going to be app server one labnet which listens on port 2222, and then app server uh, two through five labnet which listen on the standard port 22. So no extra action required. There we go. And uh, next for the ansible.cfg. In here, we have some defaults and an inventory key that points to our inventory, just like that. Uh, the remote user will be admin one more time. And ask pass, similarly, will be true, because uh, we're going to need to log in with a password uh, one more time, or maybe a couple more times. Uh, host key checking will be false, and that's because I deleted my SSH directory and we want things to be easy this time. And then for privilege escalation, uh, I'm going to set become ask pass to true, and that's because we're going to be using become privileges in uh, the in the playbook. So uh, we're going to need to make sure that it grabs the password so we can use sudo uh, with Ansible. There we go. So as long as everything's spelled right, that should work out just fine. And now what I'm going to do is actually copy over um, some of the resources from Project 4 because I think it's going to be a little bit more efficient for us to start with an existing playbook that mostly accomplishes what we already sought out to do. So I'm going to copy the sshkeys.yml from last video over here. And I'm also going to copy the Project 4 group vars. Uh, so I need to do a recursive copy for that to work properly. And there we go. So now I have the group vars and I have sshkeys.yml. Now I'm actually going to rename sshkeys.yml to something else like bootstrap.yml because we're going to be bootstrapping an account. I feel like that's an appropriate name for it. And then for the group vars, um, let me just go into there. Uh, just a quick review. We have an all uh, file in here that points to all of the hosts in the all group, which is all of the hosts. Uh, that was kind of redundant, but you get the idea. Um, so this my SSH dir is just pointing to the SSH directory, the .SSH directory on the controller node. So I used a lookup to get an environment variable to grab that correctly. Um, and yeah, so uh, just to show you that it would also work, I could uh, hard code this to just home admin .SSH, and that would work fine as well if we want to go that route. Um, this my key file thing, uh, I'm going to rename it from id ansible rsa to just id underscore rsa. That's the default name for it. 
And this is going to save us an extra step where we won't have to specify what private key file we want to use after we generate our keys and try to set it up. So there we go. That's enough of the group bars. Uh, let's go ahead and edit that bootstrap.yml file. So up here, uh, I'm going to just change this comment to something a little more appropriate, like um, bootstrap an automation account with passwordless sudo and ssh key or pub key, I guess. There we go. That's pretty verbose, but yeah, yeah, there we go. Uh, so the key preparation play can stay basically exactly the same. We don't need to even touch it. And then for this key installation play, I'm going to modify this a little bit. We'll call it bootstrap. Bootstrap. There we go. It's not very descriptive, but we kind of made up for it with the comment up here. So this is going to target the app servers. And for some tasks, uh, before we even add an authorized or public key, uh, like this task says down here, uh, we're going to want to make sure that we have a user account to actually install it in. So I'm going to say uh, automation user exists. That's the name of this task. And I'll use the user module to do that. So the username will be automation. And then for uh, another option I'm going to give here is create home and set that to true. So uh, let me just quickly review that. Um, let me go over to a new tab and go over to Ansible doc user. So this create home option is a Boolean. And basically, uh, like the name suggests, it's going to make sure that a home directory is created. So uh, this is the default on these kinds of systems anyways. But we can just make sure of that because we're definitely going to need that home directory uh, in order to be able to save our public key into that accounts.ssh folder, right? So yeah, that's enough for that one. Uh, another thing we're going to do is set up uh, sudoers access or sudo passwordless access or automation user. There we go. So uh, in here, we're going to make an amendment to the sudoers file uh, so that we're able to you know, um, uh, have pseudo access for the automation user. It can run commands as root. So to do that, I'm actually going to use the copy module and copy some content into etc sudoers.d and call the file automation. I feel like that's the easiest way to go about this. And um, for the content, uh, we're just going to make a basic sudoers entry. So first things first would be the username. So automation. There we go. Next um, would be the hosts. So we can just say all hosts and then equals and then all users. You can uh, run as all users. And then for commands, we'll just do all. But I've got to stop myself there. Um, one more thing is that we need to do no password all like that because uh, we want passwordless authentication or passwordless sudo, right? Uh, so there we go. Uh, that should be all good. Uh, one extra thing that I can throw in here is actually, let me pull up the doc for this, copy, validate. So there is a uh, option called validate in the copy module, and this is where you can uh, tell it to run a command, and uh, that will be able to check the syntax of a file, and if the command returns a good uh, return code, then that means that it succeeded, and then you know, we can have a slightly safer uh, operation going on. So let me just show you an example of that going down here. Uh, this is perfect, actually. Um, this vi sudo command dash csf. Uh, this is exactly what we need. Um, we can even just copy this entire line right, right there. Um, so uh, let me just go back over here and paste that in. So uh, this vi sudo command is going to do a check. That's what the C is for. And the percent %s, I believe, is just the uh, file that we're trying to get it to check. So um, there we go. Uh, just like that, we can have a very safe uh, sudoers uh, amendment installation, I guess. OK, that was a bit much. But anyways, moving down here to installing the public key, we'll just change the username to automation. 
and we'll be on our way. There we go. So yeah, uh, uh, one more thing actually that I almost forgot is that we need to set become to true up here. Uh, that's because we're doing some pretty big things. We're creating users, we're copying stuff to ETC, and uh, we're also installing a public key in a different user than we're actually logged in as. So we're logged in as the admin user and we're setting up something for an automation user. So right, we, we need root to actually do this. So there we go, uh, save myself from a little bit of a mishap over there. And yeah, we'll just write and quit this file and just run it. So ansible-playbook. I don't feel like doing a syntax check today. We'll just go right into it. Type in my SSH password, the become password, and let's see how this plays out. So there we go, no errors. I'm very happy about that. Um, I can run the play again, or the playbook again do the same thing, but it's going to be all okays because we did everything the idempotent way. So that's always nice to see. Now, uh, what we can do actually is test this out. So I'll make a new directory called like, I don't know, LOL. That's very funny, I guess. And I'll just run an ad hoc command, but I don't have an ansible.cfg. So I'm going to have to improvise quite a bit here. So ansible app servers dash i, and then that's my inventory file, and then dash u, that'll be automation, that's the automation user, and uh, I guess dash m ping. Let's just try that and see what happens. So yeah, we were able to do a regular ping. Can we do anything with become privileges without getting prompted for the password either? Let's try that. So I'll do something like a command uh, dash a and I'm going to head dash n uh, two I guess two lines of the etc shadow file so that's definitely something you need to do as root so what we'll do is just do a dash b for become and let's see what happens if I run this so there we go uh, this is clearly something that you would need sudo privileges to do and it's working just fine and we can take it a step further by actually fixing our ansible.cfg file if we wanted to. So actually like I could back this up um ansible.cfg.old right and then just open up ansible.cfg again. So in here I can disable ask pass or remove it. I don't need those lines. I don't need this line. I don't need that line. And I can change the remote user to automation. Automation. There we go. So now I should be able to run a very similar ad hoc command just without all of the fluff and it would work perfectly okay. So one moment, let me just figure that out. App servers, and there we go. So permission denied. Uh, why is that? That's probably because uh, become is false by default in the ansible.cfg. So maybe a little bit of fluff needed here and there. I need to do the dash B and there we go. It works just fine. So, uh, of course, if you set become to uh, true in your ansible.cfg, then that would work just fine without the dash B, but there you go. Um, we can now, uh, move forward, uh, using a, uh, easy to use automation account that doesn't need us to enter in the password all the time to use it. That's great. Uh, I mean, that's really all I, I wanted to do in this video. So yeah, uh, there we go. Pretty cool. Thanks for watching.